to start, let's add a plan. Add an array modifier and change it from fixed count to fit length and change the length to two as the plane is two by two units large and disable relative offset and change it to constant because the plane has zero thickness. If we offset it by the thickness of the plane, we're not gonna get anywhere. What this does is it makes it so that the plane goes two meters tall by offsetting it by this amount every time. So if we set this to two, that means next plane is gonna be two meters on top. And because we only have it two meters tall, it's only gonna have an extra plane. If we set it to one, for example, we'll have twice that. I'm gonna set it to two divided by the number of planes. So I'm gonna use 50. And now we can already start shading because everything is done with shaders. So let's just go in material preview and drag out a new shading window. We'll add a new material and delete the principal BSDF for now. First thing you wanna do is add a texture coordinate and a vector map. I'm gonna use the object coordinates because as you can see from the bottom, the 0, 0, 0 point is in the middle. So with the vector map right after, I'm gonna set it to add and add one on the Z axis so that our zero point on the Z is at is in the middle of this cube. The next thing is to duplicate the vector math node and set it to length. And what this is gonna do is basically get us a spherical gradient. This vector length node actually does the same thing as if you use a gradient texture set to spherical and just inverted it. So as you can see here, now this is black all around and with the vector length, it's white. So if I just add a math node and subtract it from one, I'll invert it and it looks the same. So I'm just gonna get rid of this gradient texture and add a math node, connect the subtract to the add and add a magic texture. Put the factor into the value. How you can see what's happening is use a principled VSDF and connect it to the surface. And then if you add another node and set it to greater than and connect the value to the alpha, what this is gonna do is, is take our gradient from here and make it so that if the value is bigger than 0 0.5, it's gonna be a solid material and we can't see through it. If it's under, it's just fully transparent. And if you can't really see anything, go down to your material, change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip. If you can't see the setting, just go to your render engine and change it from cycles to EV. One thing here is that you want to set this from add to subtract so that the sphere is in the middle, as you can see. And if I change the greater than now, you can see that it's basically a sphere with a bit of noise on it. I'm gonna increase this magic text to depth of four and change the scale to two. I'm also gonna increase the distortion a bit and just tweak this greater than setting. Once that's done, I'm going to add a color ramp and put it between the, the magic texture and the base color. And right now you won't see much, but what I'm going to do is change it from RGB to HSL and far. And then if we set the colors to, for example, two greens like this and this, you'll see you get a really nice rainbow effect in between. I'm just going to change this value to something like this that really looks very interesting. Another thing we can do is add an emission and mix between our emission and principal BSDF. And of course you wanna put the color into the color as well and increase the metallic on the principal BSDF. If you feel like this is too low resolution, you can always go to your array and change this down. I'm gonna put it to half of it. So it's a hundred layers. That really looks much more detailed, 0.95. And what you'll notice is that everything gets filled in. That's because the emission shader doesn't have any transparency yet. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the alpha from the principal BSDF and just mix them and later mix it again with a transparent BSDF. I'm just connect the BSDF to the shader. And now if you connect the greater than to the mix shader, you'll see that it should work if you just flip these inputs. And there we go. Now, if we change the threshold, we can decide how much of the sphere we want. I think one looks very interesting. I'm gonna take the roughness down to 0.3 and 
maybe change the colors a bit but I think I'll do that in the end so just play with the mix shader and as you can see before you add any emission it's gonna look really weird so even the tiniest bit can already make it really vibrant if you just set it to one it's gonna look flat shaded because the emission doesn't give any reflections or shadows so just set it to like 0.05 and that's basically it so our next step is to add all the lighting so I'm just gonna go in the world shader and add an environment texture connect the color to the color and just open an HDRI again I recommend HDRI Haven that's where I got this HDR from it's they have really high quality and free HDRs I'm just gonna put a link in the description so do check them out and if we go into render view now you'll see that we have the HDR in the background if you don't want it to show and just want a black background duplicate your background node and move it down and then mix them and use a light path is camera ray output as your factor and then you can choose your color here i'm just going to use black and now you still get the lighting from the hdr but background is black for the camera i'm going to increase the strength of it to like two because it just looks slightly too dark without that and back in the object shading i'm also going to add a hue saturation in between the color ramp and the base color because it's just slightly too much and there we go that's already most of it done i'm just going to add a camera and position it around here and at this point it's important to decide if you want your layers to show or not because right now if i zoom in you can definitely see the layers and that can be an artistic choice if you don't want it you can of course turn down your layer height like let's set this to 0.005 and you'll get this much higher resolution object but your reflections still won't look very nice and you can still see the layers so what you can do is add a bump node connect the normal to the normal and the add to the height make sure not to use the greater than because that's just a harsh fall off and you won't get any information from it and then just play with the distance until it looks about right as you can see here now the reflections work and you get really really nice and high quality especially if you look slightly further away you can barely see the layers anymore if you want you can of course play with the magic texture like increasing this step and you can always get interesting results like that but I like it at 4 and the colors of course and you can change this texture to anything else and just this greater than there's a lot of things you can play with here I hope you enjoyed the tutorial again if you want to you can download this blend file for free on Gumroad the link is going to be in the description see ya